Whether or not the Easter Bunny stopped by your house this morning, I've still got a treat for you. Yes, that's right. It's the great lefty freakout over Elon Musk, electric car maker, private space pioneer, <laughs> and now free speech warrior. You see, it seems Musk is threatening to turn the headquarters of the speech police Stasi, also known as Twitter, into a true open forum of ideas and debate simply by buying it and taking it over. Pretty radical stuff, isn't it? Well, actually, it is to the radical left, which is horrified at the thought that it might lose the opportunity to ban conservatives for saying hateful things like men can't have babies and entire media outlets for saying inconvenient things like, well, I don't know, the president's son is a coked up hooker loving petri dish of corruption <laughs> and God knows what else. Here's Robert Reich former U.S. Secretary of Labor turned Guardianista columnist, fretting that Musk might take over Twitter and, God forbid, let people say what they think. <laughs> this is what he said. He said, Musk says he wants to free the Internet, but what he really aims to do is make it even less accountable than it is now, when it's often impossible to discover who is making the decisions about how algorithms are designed, who is filling social media with lies, who is poisoning our minds with pseudoscience and propaganda, and who is deciding which versions of events go viral and which stay under wraps. Jeez, if there isn't been a <laughs> definition of ga gaslighting, I don't know what it is. But Reich, of course, is cur perfectly happy for the current status quo, which allows Twitter and Twitter's employees to go so far as banning satirical sites like the Babylon Bee. Oh, and speaking of Twitter's employees, haven't they had a swell time at the prospect of Elon Musk becoming their new boss. Here's Twitter scientist Cassie Rumbaugh saying that she is, quote, honestly kind of terrified oh. at the idea. According to the New York Post, some hyper-tolerant Twitter employees have even taken to forming support groups to cope with the possibility <laughs> of Musk taking over. Commentator Carol Roth summed it up saying that for Twitter employees threatening to quit is a new threatening to move to Canada if a Republican wins the White House. And all that is nothing compared to the blue tick class's total and comprehensive freakout at the thought that their favorite platform might allow people with deplorable viewpoints to challenge their own. Here's Washington Post, war, uh, pars, uh, Washington Post correspondent and war cheater leader Max Boot saying, I am concerned about what Elon Musk's takeover bid means not just for Twitter, but for our democracy. Anyone who thinks the problem with social media is too much content moderation rather than too little should not own one of the most powerful platforms. Not to be outdone, journalist, if that's the right word for him, David <laughs> Leavitt tweeted, if Elon Musk successfully purchases Twitter, it could result in World War III and the destruction oh, yeah, of our planet. Hyperbole. <laughs> now, is it World War III? Or is it World War II we're talking about? Because here's journalism school professor, and of course he's a journalism school professor, Jeff Jarvis, tweeting, today on Twitter feels like the last evening in a Ber Berlin nightclub at the twilight of Weimar, Germany. <laughs> but for sheer chutzpah, you can't beat the Washington Post, which editorialized earlier this week that, quote, Musk's appointment to Twitter's board shows that we need regulation of social media platforms to prevent, wait for it, rich people from controlling our channels of communication. Hello? Sorry. Is this the same Washington Post that is owned by Amazon billionaire Jeff Bezos, who used his paper to mount a personal jihad against Donald Trump? Democracy dies in darkness indeed, choking on irony. Pull the other one, Bezos. It plays Easter Parade.